welcome back to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for another fast-paced, interesting, and entertaining half hour of uh, news and commentary around uh, Sheboygan County. Uh, joining me today is my trusty panel of experts, former State Senator Cal Potter, Professor Tom Paneski, and semi-professor Kenneth Risto. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. Uh, I'm a, 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 a lawyer in town and, and happy you could join us. Make good money, don't they? Yeah. Uh, as you can see, I've lost control of the show already, but that's semi -professors. all right. Semi-professors. I never know what she's going to call me next. I don't know what well, that means. And I don't think about it far enough in advance, and I'm afraid that shows. We just have a lot to talk about today. Um, the recall has uh, come and gone. I thought it would be just take a few minutes to recall the recall and uh, get your ideas, uh, comments, some thoughts on the 3,000 some signatures that were, um, I was going to say submitted, no, actually shredded. Uh, Purportedly. Uh, on a radio show. Um, and what do you think? What do you think it says about the community, about the mayor, uh, about where we stand as a, as a city? People didn't want to recall. That's all. Yeah. That's I think it speaks well of Sheboygan people. I think yeah. they, they looked at the issues and they said, what, where's the beef? Where's the criminal activity? Why should we throw this guy out of office? Yeah. And I think that was reflective of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Couldn't raise the signatures. Yeah. Yeah. And I suspect if you'd analyze that 3,000, it's probably husband and wife and a few kids and some. And so you actually get the number of households, it's probably less than that even. So the impact, um, I think, is a positive thing for the mayor, and it's a positive thing for the community. Well, one of the questions I had was, does the mayor come out stronger or weaker as a result of all of this? I think it's kind of like negative campaigning. If you beat up somebody, whether it's true or not, long enough, <laughs> eventually your image is tarnished by it. And I think you know, he'd, he'd be better off had this not ever happened. Okay. But the fact of the matter is uh, he didn't um, get recalled. He's not going through the election, so I think he can hang his hat and say, um, at least the uh, majority of the community is behind me in, in what way I'd like to do and move on. It's early enough in his term to, mm -hmm. to build, I think, on it. Yeah. Um, I, um, I wonder, it's interesting, I was reading uh, today in the Plymouth Review an article uh, about the new mayor in Plymouth who's apparently having, at least from what I could pick up from the newspaper article, some trouble with his city council. So he read a prepared statement about how everybody needs to be nice and to work together. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's another municipality that seems to have, at least right now, the trouble that Sheboygan has, which is kind of pulling together. Um, I read with interest the mayor's um, unity breakfasts. Uh, and uh, it sounded like a pretty good idea to me, um, ministers. Uh, to kind of host the event uh, happening at, at the library, I think, right? Right, in the uh, Roka room or something. Right, and yeah. sort of yeah. listening sessions or, or communication <coughs> sessions. I think it's a great idea. No? Will anybody come? You know, I just get, to, I get the sense that uh, the um, folks who had real disagreements with the mayor are people who are pretty much have consumed the Kool-Aid and I don't see them coming and sitting down and talking in a civil manner with, with the mayor. I think they pretty much are locked. I mean, given their comments after the recall, mm -hmm. that they're uh, appointing themselves to be you know, the Perez watchdogs. I, didn't, I just don't know who's going to come. Um, if he's really thinking about trying to reach out and build some, some bridges with, with those individuals, I don't think they're interested. Which, you know, I was thinking as you were talking about this whole issue in Plymouth, is I'm not sure if just people are taking their cues from what they see on cable television, you know, from Jerry Springer all the way to Hardball with, you know, with Richard, what's his name? I forget his name, Mark Matthews? Yeah, Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews, thanks. And, and who is the and guy that got beat up? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's uh, my generation or our generation and the era we grew up in, that the whole issue of civility and civil disagreement has just been lost, or it's all those combinations of things, but it's certainly not just unique to Sheboygan that um, people have just lost the ability to dis disagree and everything becomes personal and everything becomes you know, hardball, and it's, dis yeah. it's disappointing. Yeah, the personal, I, I mean, we, hopefully we have disagree, we have disagreements, we have different opinions, and mm -hmm. you air them out on the council floor or bef in discussions before or after council. But 
You not in violation out, of the open meetings. Well, you go course, out afterwards and have a drink, and uh, they're not still a, a person and a human <laughs> being. As long as, you a don't, <laughs> as long as you don't have a quorum. <laughs> as long, yeah. But, you know, uh, and you, you figure out uh, how, to, how to work the council and how to survive, and sometimes you win a few, sometimes you lose a few, but you go on. You don't make it personal, which is, it seems mm -hmm. like it's becoming more and more personal nationally, locally, mm -hmm. uh, everything else. Yeah. That's what sort of you were saying, yeah. Become a personal issue, not a uh, just an intellectual issue. I'm spending disagree. a lot of time, like I said, I'm spending a lot of time trying to think about why that is. And I don't know if it's just people, like I said, taking their cues from, from what they see in the media. And they, I know in, in the classrooms when I'm, when I'm working with students, they, they, they quickly fall into that when there's disagreements about things because you want to have social studies classes where kids are engaged and talking about those things. But it almost is if I always have to go through the this isn't going to be, you know, all-star wrestling, you know, verbally. And we're not going to just, we're going to actually talk about substantive stuff. And you have to defend your opinions with reasons as opposed to attacking the other person. Well, That's and difficult. just to point out that this is the, the building blocks of the Donahue group is that we came together to, uh, with diverse opinions and uh, to share them civilly and in a highly intelligent and uh, entertaining fashion, but uh, and except for Ken Risto, we seem to be succeeding. I think you know relatively well. <laughs> and I've been restrained. <laughs> I thought. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll applaud the mayor for trying to bring some unity, but mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know that he needs to do that. I mean, okay. he just needs to kind of just step back and I just do the job. You know, I'll try to you know do a good job for the city of Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. and I think offering <laughs> offering. You know, to the other side is, sure. is a good gesture, but I think, yeah. like Ken said, I don't know, they're going to show up, yeah. and they're probably pre preparing for the next mayoral election, and you know, see if so. they can knock them off, you know, that's, I think yeah. that's the next step for them. Yeah. And then there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with right. that. Yeah. Um, it but, will be interesting to see how all, all of that plays out. See, I think the mayor comes out a little strong at the end of the recall. I think, yeah, obviously, I, I, Cal's right, that going through the process wasn't fun, and it certainly isn't helpful to getting the work of the city done. But I think that it was, a, in a sense it was, sort of a reverse referendum on, on, on being mayor. And I think, yeah. for, at the very least, the city of Sheboygan is saying, uh, let's give this guy some time to actually do his job and we can make an evaluation when we have elections. And at the most they can say, you know, they, they threw their best shot at me and, and the public clearly is behind what I'm trying to do. Um, so for him to afterwards to, to reach out, I think, is a really, is a really good thing, a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. And I think if he uses that as a, as a basis for continuing forward with some of the tough, tough uh, budget decisions that are going to have to be made, I think he's going to be okay. I think he really is. It is going to be one tough budget. Was there ever a budget, uh, Tom, when you were in the city council, where there was no proposed dollar increase? It is my understanding that that is going to be the mayor's proposal, is that and I may be wrong, but, and, and I know certainly from start to finish things can change, but that there will be no dollar increase so that the amount of the budget for uh, 2007 will be the same as it was for 2006. I may have that wrong, but that was my understanding of what the mayor was going to come up with. That's pretty revolutionary, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I don't recall, I guess, uh, I think we always had some increase uh, yeah. in, in my years on the council. Mm -hmm. uh, but we always got shared revenue from the state, mm -hmm. and we always counted on that. And uh, There was federal revenue sharing at that time, At that time, too, we had no, federal revenue. No, none of that at all. Right. Well, see, that was one of the things. At that time, the federal revenue sharing uh, was supposed to be earmarked for, I forget what, but it got used for operations in the police department. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. So it became operational money, and then, of course, then the police department uh, grew a little, or and then it disappeared. Now where does the money come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think some of those, yeah, those federal block grants came out of uh, various crime bills and, and those kinds of initiatives. So they were, yeah, they were earmarked for, for police and uh, for, for police protection. Well, and you place. remember we had the mayor here one session with <laughs> all of his little budget posters, and it's, it's a pretty mm. grim picture. Mm -hmm. Pretty grim, which leads me into the next topic. Um, just yesterday, so you can tell when we've been taping, um, there was a three-hour meeting, uh, I read in the newspaper, of the uh, Public uh, Safety Committee uh, talking about the design for the police station. Uh, 
my own view is, is that referendum that Cleunas and Vanderweel had originally proposed, I don't think governments should use referenda a lot. I mean, we elect people to make decisions, and so they shouldn't be throwing those decisions back at the, at the community. But from time to time, something is important enough. And I thought just not a referendum on whether there should be a new police station, because I sure think there should be. Um, what kind of cost range do we want to look at? And I thought it was an interesting, uh, an interesting referenda and uh, referendum proposition. And, and Alderman Vanderweel actually, <laughs> I think, one of the proponents turned around and voted against it. What do you think? Good government, bad government, good idea, bad idea? Well, I, I think you're to a point now where you're saying, what is it that the police department needs to function? I mean, do they need the garage? Do they need the maintenance? Do they need a, a fitness room? Do they need a shooting range? What, what is it that that police department needs? Then start looking at what the bottom line is for that facility that everybody agrees they need. And eventually we're going to have sticker shock because whether you build a garage for your house or you build a house or whatever, today things aren't cheap. And I think arguing over $9 million or versus $13 million is probably splitting hairs really in the, in the long run. And that station's going to sit there for 50 years or 60 years. And a difference of three, four million bucks, I think, is really petty politics, in my opinion. And I think when you look at what we're investing in schools, and, and you know, God bless the Sheboygan school system for getting <laughs> the field houses and all the additions to the schools, but we've been made an investment that should be good for many, many years for the kids of this community. Of course, think, we did that by binding referendum. Right. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think people, if push comes to shove, would say if the police need these things and it's going to cost us three or four million, um, I think the, the taxpayers probably are not going to uh, have a revolt over the fact that it's going to be 13 million rather than 9 million. See, I, I view it as I'm in charge of the dollars. I'm not in, I don't know what a police department needs. That's the police chief's job. Mm -hmm. However, I can, re, I can ask the police chief to convince me that he needs this, or I could say, I think that's fluff you could do without. Uh, convince me that you need what you need, and, and I could support it. But if you can't convince me, then since I'm in charge of the dollars, I won't give you the dollars for that. Because my experience is the directors try to get as much as they can for what they, you know, this is, they want the, uh, they want the Lincoln or the, well, Taj Cadillac, Mahal. Taj Mahal model, <laughs> a police station. They want it all. Uh, if I have an opportunity, I want it all. Well, maybe you can't get it all. So I'm, I'm the only one that could say, yes, you could have the dollars. No, you can't have the dollars. Do Convince you think, and, and here's my question, um, and Ken, you from a social studies, civics perspective, but Tom, just having been on the council, um, is it seems to me that the discussion here is properly in the in the public safety committee, and then moving to the council. Um, is this something that the it, the process is not doesn't seem to be very going very efficiently? Let me put it that way. Is this something that the mayor should be directing, or is this really city council driven? I tend to think it's city council driven, but is it an executive or a legislative matter? Um, and it's just because it seems to be going slow and pretty inefficiently, which is what government is from time to time, but. Governments like that all the time <clears throat> because it has to take a variety of points of view. It wasn't ever designed to be efficient. And it's um, using taxpayer money, so exactly, it needs exactly. to be accountable. Yeah. And I think you also have to consider the, the dynamics of, of where the mayor is and, and the relationship he has with the council. And I think, that, I think that's one of the tough spots that the, the mayor is in. If he takes initiative, um, you're going to have folks in the community you know, accusing him of essentially running a, you know, a junta. Um, and then if he, if, he's, if, he's, if he allows the council to, you know, sort of organically grow the solution while well, he's not providing leadership. I mean, I saw that going on this summer where, you know, the council's allowed to make comments and I think there was some criticism of the mayor saying he doesn't have the a control of the council. Well, first of all, Sheboygan, county, Sheboygan City Government isn't designed for him to have control of the council. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if he sat, if he actually da did, you know, start stepping on people. All of a sudden, we're saying, "Well, the guy's trying to quash all sorts of discussion, and he's this is his agenda now. Is he's only going to call on the people that agree with him?" And we've got all that kind of yabbering going on. So he's in a tough spot. I think the council's going to have to uh, pound around on this for a while and 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 let them sort of find out where the, the public is on this, uh, because the public again is faced with. Is with again, as we often are uh, in, in contemporary times, we want government and we don't want to pay for it. You know, we want to have you know property tax freezes, but we want to have you know support our police police department with 
whatever it is they want. And uh, the, the city's going to face a really <coughs> tough choice because I think what, what the police department will eventually want and what the public is willing to pay, um, well, it's certainly not going to be around nine, ten million dollars. I, uh, Cal, I thought your point was was interesting. To me, there is actually a, a fair amount of difference between nine and thirteen million, and I understand your historical perspective. And overall, it may not be that much. I guess my question, and I have not seen this um, in at least newspaper articles or at least recently, would be the cost per household under each scenario. So under a nine million or eight point eight million and a thirteen million, what would it cost the average homeowner over what period of time? And of course the, the school district, I thought, did a brilliant job of showing that this I mean that, that referendum was huge. That was a huge mm -hmm. amount of money, thirty two million dollars. Um, mm -hmm. but they were very good at showing that it was twenty two dollars per house over a twenty year period of time or whatever it was. And we haven't, uh, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> always a gentleman. Uh, we haven't really thought about, or we haven't, that hasn't been articulated for us. And I think that would be helpful, quite frankly, uh, you know, on both sides of the discussion. Mm -hmm. What's it going to cost? So. I mean, we had a discussion, like, not the police station, but uh, the marina, the, the lakefront. And I considered the lake, when I was on the council, it was the lakefront. Do we do... Uh, uh, New Harbor, New, and of course we had the PCBs prior to that. But I thought, you know, I'm going to vote for the the money to put in the the stone and everything to create a harbor because that's our resource. The lake is our resource. If we don't have a marina, okay. Sometime along down the road, we'll have a marina, but we need to protect our our shoreline and have a and have a harbor because that's our resource. And uh, and there were people who said we're stupid. You know, sure. and that, that's going to be that point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think the council has to step up. I don't know if they need a referendum. They, they talk to their constituents, and some will say, yeah, you should do it. Some will say, no, you shouldn't do it. Council member decides, yeah. moves ahead. Yeah. <laughs> talks to his other council yeah. members. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Talks to the mayor. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Well, it's, Formulate it's... opinion and move ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Any predictions on when all of this is going to get resolved? <laughs> I don't really know. Well, it's really, you know, we have a strong council system, not a strong mayor system in Sheboygan. We don't have a, a Chicago John Daly type no, system. Yeah. And as a result, it, it takes some, I think, uh, guts on the part of people who are on the city council to come up and make decisions. Uh, the marina was a good example. It wasn't popular, yeah, it wasn't easy, but they made a decision. This police station's another one of mm -hmm. those issues. And if they can't stand the heat, they shouldn't be on the city council. And I think, uh, like I said, talk to the uh, the police and find out what they need and then see exactly whether this is a Taj Mahal or is it something very basic and then go back to your architects and your contractors and see what it's going to cost. But it's not going to be cheap. Um, houses, aren't, as I said right. before, aren't cheap today. You don't get much for a million bucks today anymore. And as a result, uh, I think you have to say that this is going to be more expensive probably than you'd like it to be. And, and we don't have to beat this dead station too much longer, but my own view is that particularly with schools but in any kind of public building it's worthwhile making the place look decent because mm -hmm. I think oh, yeah, I and, and to, to build a decent facility but also so that it's an edifice that the community can have some amount of pride in and I and think it that's, lasts too there's certain yeah, materials right. last better than others you know right well, we have a tendency to stay with you know public buildings for 25, 30, 50, 80, 100 years. <laughs> I mean, we had, we had schools, you yeah. know, until we did the renovations, we had schools that were over a couple, you know, over 100 years old. Plymouth Utility Building was built right. in 1901. Yeah. <laughs> and the, has been in that same same location, you know, so. City, you know, the post office was built during the, during the Great Depression as part of the New Deal. That's still standing there, and the Carl County Courthouse is still standing there strong. City Hall. Yeah. A, it's, what's stunning to me yeah, is yeah. that, you know, they're talking, you know, when we every 25 years we have to build a brand new Bradley Center down in Milwaukee. I yeah. mean, yeah. When it comes to sports complexes, yeah. um, we're not afraid to to go and ask the taxpayers for various tax breaks or tax incentives, or in some cases sales taxes, to support those things. Well, that segues nicely into the I am to uh, the next topic that I'd like to just uh, have your thoughts on, which is the two WalMarts in this not huge area. Uh, I'm stunned at the at how quickly 
some private buildings get abandoned. Um, presumably when these two Walmarts go up, the Walmart at mm -hmm. the Taylor Center will close down. The Century Store didn't last very long. The Piggly Wiggly went through this great huge building um, uh, spurt, if I can say, and they had built a fairly nice, uh, very nice uh, supermarket on, on Wilson Avenue that they abandoned. And I know it's being used, so it's not as if it's just sitting there unused or whatever. But there doesn't seem to be that hesitation to just keep moving, <laughs> changing from one huge building to mm -hmm. another huge building. Mm -hmm. And um, so what do you think about having two Walmarts in Sheboygan? Well, you know, the irony of building these buildings and then letting them sit is that, you know, people complain about taxes, but actually people pay for those things. They pay for it through the prices that they pay on the products. And so the private sector has a tax on you as well when they do things. Um, be nice if these buildings could be retrofitted for police stations or something else. <laughs> well, they looked at that. Didn't they look at the Sentry building? I, I thought for the police know. station. <clears throat> I thought it was a great idea, but in any event, what do I know? Because well, my children will say not much. Well, in the case of the Piggly Wiggly on the south side, they built over there solely, as I talked to some of the folks who used to be part of that organization, they built there solely so that no one else would build over there. That was the only reason that drove that decision over across the street. They just didn't, they realized that was a prime piece of real estate that was going to be developed. And if they didn't build over there and then use the other building over there, that they would end up with having some competition. And it's worked very well for them until, I don't know, is the wall, I think the Walmart that's being built on the south side is a super Walmart with yeah. groceries, right? Yeah. So Piggly Wiggly is the only uh, grocery store on the south side of town. Um, mm -hmm. I know some folks will drive, you know, on the other side to get there to go over to Park and Save or whatever it's called this week. But, um, <laughs> but really, I, I mean, that's that. I just, it's, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, you look at the, the Kmart um, <coughs> over in the south side of Sheboygan, yeah. which you know, has maybe five or six or eight or ten cars, except for the holidays over there, and it's criticized for being, you know, older. The, our mall is always criticized for being older and not looking modern enough. It's just the nature of a competitive commercial enterprise is there's going to be this, what did Schumpeter call it, you know, the, the, the creative destruction of capitalism. And uh, am I terrific. thrilled that Walmart's coming to town? No, I'm not thrilled at all about it, but obviously when you look at what they're gonna to bring to the tax base of, this, of the town of Sheboygan and the, and the city of Sheboygan, it's um, going to be quite the, uh, I suppose it'll be an improvement in that respect. Probably a reflection on the people in Sheboygan County looking for uh, price in their shopping yeah. habits. I mean, we got a super yeah. center in Plymouth, and you're going to have two in Sheboygan. That's a lot in a county of, uh, what, 110,000 people? I guess that's my question. How does yeah. the, um, I mean, we, we just do keep building and building and building, and they obviously are profitable. I, Walmart is not in the business to lose money, and um, so it will be, and... Uh, Tax base wise, of course, it makes it makes a lot of sense. The Walmart on the south side of town has energized that area of the city in just an extraordinary way. I mean, the traffic issues for um, the Deer Trace complex, getting onto the interstate. At one point, I understood that the Department of Transportation had four or five roundabouts planned all within like a mile so that my mom, who never was able to get used to the 8th Street rotary, um, you know, people would just be circling around and around. I think we after what we went through down on 8th Street. But <laughs> I mean, it'll, it'll be ago, interesting to see. Yeah, a few years ago, everything we just basically said was on the north side. You had, yeah. Well, then you had Taylor Mall went up, but you had Northgate, mm -hmm. you had all the stores up there. Mm -hmm. What was on the south side? You had that big piece of land that was had the, the oil tanks or whatever, sure. the containers sure. on it, which wasn't being used. There were no stores down there. Yeah. And now the south side? Is, yeah. Well, you well, might have a renaissance is, on the north side with the new Walmart there and the new Menards right across the street from the new Walmart. So well, but, where where does that put, yeah, but where does that put Taylor Heights, mm -hmm. which it seems to be... Yeah. turning into a, a somewhat of a ghost town and I always get nervous yeah. when I see you know cash and check and goes and whatever those things are called where people are you know borrowing money on their on their paychecks right um, and similarly in the south side that it used to be very vibrant uh, that what I think was called Washington Square oh yeah that's uh, where the Kmart is and there used to be a park and save there and and that was considered 
so you know, and then you, as you worked your way down, brunettes, uh, brunettes was there. Oh, as that's a, right. Yeah. That used to be the vibrant, the vibrant area, working all the way down to, to say Union Avenue. Everything seems to be fish. F what's going to happen is you'll have the development on the far south side of town, but it'll be interesting to see what happens over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are we going to do? So the next big problem or insight is what do you do with the properties that are becoming mm -hmm. yeah. little used? Who's going to be creative and find creative uses for the buildings and or the land? Well, who well, knows? Maybe we, we have a, a, a major league team here and buy some up and build a, <laughs> build a sports <laughs> arena. <laughs> or maybe that's where the... Uh, maybe that's where the uh, 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 new police station can go in the old Walmart building because I think. Oh, please. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I'm Whatever just discussions are citing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, the nursing home issue remains lively in Sheboygan County. I thought there were two very thoughtful pieces, point counterpoint, in the um, in the uh, Sheboygan Press a few days ago. Uh, one from the union perspective, one uh, from Supervisor Vandersteen. Uh, I think really reflecting the complexities of a government entity operating in a highly, highly, highly competitive area. Uh, nursing home care is, it's, a, it's like opening a restaurant. Uh, when you do it well, it's really a treat, but it's a mighty, mighty hard way to make a living. Um, any thoughts about, I, I mean, it seems to me that it's a done deal in some respects, that Sunny Ridge will be privatized and, and, and people will, if they have jobs, the jobs aren't going to be as good as they are now. And somehow I think the community suffers from that. But what are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, there's an offer on the table, and the county board probably looks at their compadres around the state and sees only about three counties still in the nursing home business. And I think they're hell-bent on saying, we don't want to be in the nursing home business. And the alternative now is, is this offer a realistic one? Or is it a good one? And if that's the case, I think the scenario you played out is, is, is going to happen. I think the, the consumer's point of view will be uh, as the feds continue to lowball reimbursement formulas to private homes, how many uh, slots will there be for people who need uh, uh, public assistance nursing home care? Right. And, and, and it is very tough. One of the good things that's come out of this whole movement, I think, is putting time and effort, not enough money, but at least some money into alternates to alternatives to, to nursing home yeah. care. Because as much as we talk about how we love our nursing homes, people are, I mean, the, the parents who say to their kids, do anything but don't put me in a nursing home. It's a heartbreaking decision. And, you know, so it, it really is, uh, it really is a, a very, very tough, tough, uh, tough measure. I think government just is not going to be growing. Um, well, what's the, well, I mean, this is a little different because it's private sector building. What's the building going up on uh, 6th Street? Uh, oh, the landmark. Landmark. Uh, which retirement is, homes. This is retirement homes, assisted living, nursing home. I mean, it's just. Right. And, you know, you said it's the full service. Mm -hmm. Seamless transition. I think yeah. actually that's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. And it has worked yeah. well out on the north side with Morningside. We've got to wrap it up, but uh, it's been a pleasure, and we'll, uh, we'll see what our predictions bring.